Thanks, Taylor, and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, as Taylor mentioned, my name is Corey Diaz, and I'm the CEO of Anfield Energy Corporation. Uh, we have an aim to get uh, into production. We are a near-term uranium production company with assets in the U.S. Uh, we have the safe harbor. Feel free to read at your leisure. Uh, reasons to invest uh, in our company. Uh, we have a large portfolio of ISR projects in Wyoming. Uh, our flagship property in Wyoming is known as the Charlie ISR project with about 4 million pounds. Uh, the interesting thing about this project is that it sits next to UEC's Willow Creek ISR operations, so production uh, facilities are nearby. Uh, we have an agreement in place uh, with UEC uh, to process up to half a million pounds per year through its facility. Uh, we put out a PEA on Charlie back in October 2019, which showed relatively strong economics, which we'll address later on in the presentation. Uh, on the other side of our uh, project portfolio, we have uh, conventional assets, which are underpinned by the Shooter and Canyon Mill, uh, one of only three licensed permitted and constructed mills in the US uh, with multiple projects nearby. Uh, so, you know, one of the reasons to invest in uranium in the US, you know, we look at safe jurisdictions, given what's happening in the world, we think that uh, there's a huge advantage to being based in North America and the US. We have access to existing processing infrastructure, long-term optionality given our portfolio, uh, strong board and the pursuit of cash flow uh, opportunities elsewhere. So our strategy is twofold. Uh, first of all, we're looking to create uh, a, a portfolio of projects uh, that can be produced through the ISR method in Wyoming. Uh, secondly, we look to uh, create a conventional uh, asset portfolio underpinned by Shooter and Canyon Mill in Utah and uh, Colorado. And thirdly, we do look at other opportunities outside of the uranium sector uh, in a way that uh, would make sense to add value to Anfield shareholders, but our immediate focus is, is Wyoming and ISR and uranium. Capital markets profile, uh, you can see that we have uh, about 327 uh, million shares outstanding, uh, current market cap about 30 to 35 million dollars. Uh, management insiders hold about 6%. Cotter Corporation, from which we bought Charlie, uh, owns about 3% of, um, of our stock. Management directors, I mentioned myself already. Uh, we do have a strong team with a lot of uranium-related experience. Scott Lomadu, our VP of Sales and Marketing, has worked uh, for Converdyne, which is a uh, conversion facility, Duke Energy, a utility, Uranium One, a producer, and New Mexico, a trader. Uh, Josh Bleak has worked in mining for a number of, um, a number of years, uh, comes from a mining family, number of generations, multiple, down in Arizona, Utah, is very familiar with uranium and uh, other projects, uh, other commodities. Don Falconer has worked both on the uh, the public and private side of the industry, we worked for Ontario Power Generation, uh, sales and marketing in the nuclear division. Uh, Stephen Lunsford has experience on ISR and specifically Charlie. Uh, his previous company actually created a feasibility site for the project. So we have a lot of eight, uh, asset specific experience um, on the board. Uh, so we do think we're well rounded and well positioned to start moving these assets forward. Industry catalysts, you know, I think, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, war is something that does uh, tend to uh, stoke up the uh, uranium market. The Russia-Ukraine conflict could have uh, a, a large impact on uh, the availability of uranium going forward. Uh, as you know, Russia is a, one of the larger producers of uranium in the world uh, and has influence over the largest producer in the world, uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, so there may be some uh, inherent risk related to geopolitical forces uh, in Europe uh, that could impact the U.S. specifically because the U.S. utilities buy a fair amount of material from uh, overseas, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the, on the positive side, the U.S. Uh, has embraced uh, the green energy deal, uh, which also includes the idea of using nuclear as the baseload power source when it comes to uh, you know, clean energy mix, um, obviously on top of your renewables. So I think that the companies that are in a position to start producing uranium in the U.S. to provide material to U.S. utilities um, are at a great advantage. Uh, we believe we're one of those because we do have access to uh, production facilities both um, within our portfolio through the Shooter and Canyon Mill and the hard work side of our business, 
and uh, the, uh, the Willow Creek operations owned by UEC through uh, a contract. And then obviously in North America, we've got um, the Sprott Physical Uranium Fund, uh, which has been uh, acquiring material in the uranium spot market over the past uh, nine months or so. Uh, that is obviously you know, squeezing the supply that's available to uh, uh, utilities that have been buying out of the market uh, over the past few years, um, delaying the signing of long-term contracts. We believe that the utilities are now in a position where they need to start contracting, which is kind of an important part of uh, the cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that there are only a handful of companies that would be able to be in a position to sign contracts because uh, they have access to uh, processing facilities. Uh, Anfield is one of those uh, handful. So in terms of our step C rating production, as I mentioned, Charlie is our flagship property and the ISR part of our portfolio. Uh, there's a low cost opportunity for us to move that forward to production, about $6.7 million in pre-production costs. Uh, this is underpinned by the resin capture and processing agreement that we signed with Uranium One. Uh, Uranium One's assets were acquired by UEC uh, late last year. Uh, so the contract carries over, uh, but it allows us to buy half a million pounds or to process half a million pounds of uranium per year at its facility. Uh, and this fits into kind of a near-term focus for production given the low cost and the accessibility of a processing facility. Uh, in future, uh, we're looking at other ISR products that we have uh, in Wyoming. As I mentioned, we've got another 24. So the plan is to look at which of those would be the most prospective um, with which we can create a pipeline of projects. Uh, so we have a long-term production opportunity underpinned by the contract uh, going forward in Wyoming. Uh, we can't say that all of the projects, all the 25 projects would fit into Kind of a near-term production time frame, uh, but certainly we do believe that a handful would fit and uh, provide us with that pipeline. And then Blue Sky, uh, step three, tied to the conventional side of our business, we do have uh, a mill I mentioned, uh, one of only three licensed, permitted, and constructed uranium mills, conventional uranium mills in the U.S. Um, you know, the ability to refurbish that mill uh, is important because obviously that's cheaper than building a new mill and it's a shorter time frame within which uh, that mill could be ready for restart. Uh, license capacity of about a million pounds per year uh, and, and underpinned by the mill, but we also have a number of products you know, in both Utah and Colorado which could create a long-term sustainable production opportunity on the hardware side of our portfolio. Map of our key assets, you can see the gray dots represent our key ISR products in Wyoming, or those uh, for which we have resource reports. Uh, the blue dots represent our hard work assets. Um, and so we have assets in Arizona, Colorado, and Utah, and also the mill. Uh, so we do have uh, two separate and distinct uh, opportunities and paths through which we can reach production. Uh, here's a Charlie project I mentioned that we talk a little bit more about it. Uh, we acquired it from Cotter Corporation back in March of 2019. Uh, it's about 24 months uh, to reach production due to the proximity of uh, Uranium One's or UEC's producing mines on either side of it. Uh, we do have the total milling agreement for half a million pounds per year. There is an exploration target on the property of roughly 400 to 800,000 uh, pounds, which could be added to the production mix. Uh, the PEA called out an NPV of about uh, $18.9 million uh, with pre-production CapEx of about $6.7 million with direct OPEX of roughly $23 a pound, uh, an all-in cost of roughly $36 a pound. So uh, even in the current environment, this could be a profitable venture. So here's a map of the other ISR projects that we do hold in Wyoming that we acquired from Uranium One back in 2016. Uh, you can see the cluster to the Northeast. Those are the ones closest to the existing facility, the Willow Creek facility that uh, was acquired by UEC from Uranium One. And those would probably fall into, um, a handful of those would probably fall into the, being the most perspective uh, that we'd look to create a pipeline from. Uh, the ones to the Southwest are closer to your energy's producing facility. Uh, so there could be an opportunity to, you know, divest joint venture uh, or a transact on those assets going forward. 
Uh, so we do have a lot of optionality even within the ISR portfolio. Uh, you can see on the, uh, um, the bottom left of the slide, we do have a list of the resources that we've managed to convert from historical to uh, current. So the Hard Rock, Hard Rock Center of our business, uh, the key project here is the Velvet Wood project. Uh, we acquired this from UAE One back in 2015. Uh, it has produced in the past, it produced about 4 million pounds of uranium and 5 million pounds of vanadium, uh, relatively high grade, 0.46 to 0.64, uh, high grade for the United States. Uh, you know, we did do a PEA on this project back in 2016, which uh, called out a uh, valuation of roughly $63, $63 million uh, dollars, uh, with life of mine cash costs of uh, $29 a pound. So uh, we believe that this could be the first feed in through the mill once the mill is uh, refurbished. Other assets that we hold in the hard work center of our business, if you look at the, uh, the picture on the right side of the page, you can see the blue dots represent our projects, the red dot represents the mill, the gray dots represent uh, projects held by third parties. Uh, so there's the opportunity to act as a tow mill operation uh, through the mill to help uh, facilitate business outside of our own portfolio. So there's a lot of optionality tied into having the mill. Um, you can see that the, we also hold a portfolio of royalties um, you know, on a few projects of our peers. And finally, the Westlope projects that we acquired in Colorado represent um, a big opportunity for us on both the uranium and vanadium side. The entire portfolio consists of roughly 11 million pounds of uranium and uh, about 53 million pounds of vanadium. Uh, so that opportunity could um, you know, push us towards adding a vanadium circuit to our mill in order to capture uh, that vanadium side of the business. But certainly uh, with West Lobe and the other products combined, we had a long-term sustainable business uh, on the conventional side, uh, which would be underpinned by the mill. A peer comparison. You can see that we traded a pretty significant discount vis-a-vis uh, -vis our peers. Uh, some of that is probably related to the fact that we're not particularly well known, um, you know, but we certainly think that we should be trading uh, at least closer to the average, uh, which would, um, you know, more than quintuple our valuation today. But we think that, uh, uh, you know, as the market continues to improve, um, you know, as uh, the risks are, are borne by uh, the Eurasian companies or Eurasian countries that uh, provide a lot of the West with material, uh, we think that we'll be well positioned to at least um, start producing and sending material to U.S. utilities uh, that would be seeking alternative sources. So uh, we think our valuation um, is quite low. and We think that uh, there's certainly significant upside to our story vis-a-vis -vis our peers. So in summary, uh, as I mentioned, we've got significant exposure to lower cost, smaller scale and near term production uh, through uh, our ISR products and specifically Charlie uh, and the upside significant blue sky potential uh, tied to our hard rock assets underpinned by uh, shooting cannon mill. Now, obviously there's a lot of geopolitical risk associated with uh, uranium and uh, the major sources of uranium. So we think that um, you know, the things that are transpiring in Europe today will have an impact as to how uh, utilities decide to purchase materials going forward uh, because they can't they put themselves at risk of not having supply or having supply disruptions um, over a significant period of time. Uh, we know that there's a supply demand imbalance that's been talked about for a number of years. Uh, I think it's a good reminder that uh, uh, you know not all pounds are the same, not all pounds in all jurisdictions are the same. Um, and so even within uh, you know, the supply chain, you'll see uh, some materials where there's greater risk than others. So we think that being in North America, specifically the U.S., provides us with an advantage uh, when it comes to uh, being a domestic supplier to U.S. producers uh, because the risk, um, at least the geopolitical risk, is lower. Uh, we are a company that looks for opportunities um, in other commodities. Uh, if they uh, are compelling enough for us to bring in and incubate and spin out, but they're certainly not our focus. We've done it uh, most recently with a gold asset and uh, you know, our aim is to spin that out and provide some value to Anfield shareholders. 
Um, but at the end of the day, we are a uranium company that's uh, looking for improved uranium prospects. Um, our aim is to get production in a relative near term and be a supplier to US uh, utilities. And we think we're well positioned both on the ISR side of the business and the hard rock side of the business. And that's it. Thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for the great uh, presentation, Corey. Um, so we do have uh, a couple questions here. Um, you know, recently you did uh, announce uh, for those conventional assets uh, that you, there's a, a, I guess, work underway to complete mineral resources uh, for some of those, those projects there. Um, you know, are there any uh, historical resources at those assets? And... Well, we have announced that we are uh, looking to uh, update the resources associated with the West Slope project that we've acquired in Colorado from Cotter. Uh, historically, there are about 11 million pounds of uranium and 53 million pounds of vanadium. So uh, that's over nine different projects. Uh, we're going to be targeting the most prospective of those nine projects uh, with regard to putting out a resource. So probably, you know, the, the top three, um, you know, because I think though that's where we'd be focused. And so we'd expect to have a resource out uh, in the next month or so. Okay, and um, so so with that, obviously with that timeline, there's there's no additional drilling that would need to be done or anything to to kind of prove that up or, or anything. Correct. Uh, these assets actually produced, you know, within the last ten to fifteen years, um, and a lot of work's been done by Cotter, um, you know, making sure that those assets uh, stay current. So the resources are, uh, you know, are they there? There's been lots of data um, that's been left for us. Uh, and the engineering firms that we've, uh, that we've used uh, you know, have confirmed that we don't need to do any further drilling in order to confirm uh, the existing resource. Great. Seems like a, a very good um, kind of value proposition there for, for people getting those uh, studies out quickly and, and kind of proving that up and, and uh, yeah. deep. Okay. So yeah, our, our focus tends to be looking for assets that have a resource in place already, which don't require a lot of drilling. Um, you know, because I think the, you know, at the end of the day, our, our aim is to get into production. So those, you know, we don't want to spend, you know, two to three years, you know, proving out a resource if we can find something that has a resource already and, and recent production. Great. Okay. Um, turning to um, the, the shooter ring mill, could you just uh, remind us there, um, is there any kind of, um, or what the CapEx is for, for getting that uh, up and running or what, what um, I guess, condition that's in? Yeah, so I, you know, I don't want to um, get into the details of the weeds too much, but you know, I think in comparison, there was a, a company that recently put out a report uh, to build a mill in New Mexico. Uh, it's about a thousand tons per day mill, uh, which would cost about forty million dollars. Um, so we're looking to refurbish an existing mill that actually has a structure in place, and it's actually smaller. It's seven hundred fifty tons per day. So. Uh, you can look at, if you can work on the math, um, you can see that the cost to refurbish the mill should be, you know, south, you know, implied south of $40 million. Okay, great. Um, you know, I think we, we've got about just under a minute left. Uh, do you have any kind of final uh, pitch for investors or kind of three reasons that investors should look at your story right now before we wrap up? Yeah. Sure, sure. Look, I think we're, we're relatively cheap vis-a-vis -vis our peers. Um, I think that's an important part of it. Uh, I think the second thing is we're uniquely positioned to have opportunities both on the ISR side of the business and the hard work side of our business. Um, you know, there, you know, energy fuels is one that has kind of hands in both pies. Um, and obviously the market cap is significantly higher than, than ours, but uh, we do have a path that could put us into a very similar position as energy fuels. Um, with the refurbishment of the mill, we could produce um, you know, from our hardware properties. Um, the access to uh, Willow Creek, you know, through our contract with a UEC puts us in a very unique position to produce in a relative near term. Um, that positioning allows us to sign contracts with utilities. Utilities will take us seriously because we can show that we have at least one path to production. And when compared to, you know, explorers or other developers who may not have access to ultimate production. Uh, utilities won't sign contracts with those who don't have that access. So we're very uniquely positioned, you know, probably five or six companies, you know, are in that position to state that we can produce. Uh, so I think that's a very 
kind of unique position for uh, for us and and certainly uh, should be considered when looking and, and evaluating what investments uh, uh, investors make in the sector.